what is up you guys welcome back to the channel and if you're new here welcome to the channel so look I know it's been a while but we're gonna get right back into this guys today what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be giving you a toolbox tour of this black box right here that you see behind me I also have that red box over there but that red box contains mostly stuff like this sanding blocks hammers spatulas brat nailers See that box right there contains mostly stuff that I use to work around the house. All right, so what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna look inside this black box right here, which is my Mac Tools Tech 1000 that I picked up many, many, many years ago for dirt cheap. All right, so a lot of you guys are looking for toolbox tours because you wanna know what kind of tools you need to invest in to become a mechanic or what kind of tools you're missing. Or maybe you're just curious to see what other mechanics have in their toolboxes. Now I'm gonna guarantee you that whatever I have in this box is gonna vastly vary from the tools that you're gonna have in your box. And that's gonna depend mostly on what kind of work you're gonna do. See, I work with a lot of guys that do suspension and steering all day long. And they don't have the tools that I have in here because they don't need them. The work that I do mostly is electrical, diagnostics, maintenance, light repairs, you know, tune-ups, uh, stuff like timing bolts, water pumps, removing intakes, uh, diagnosing check engine lights, stuff that affects engine performance and that requires a little bit more thinking. See, a lot of guys like to say that you need to work smart, not hard. I say work smart and work hard. So if you want to be a bumper to bumper tech, you're going to have to invest in a lot more tools than somebody who just does suspension and steering all day, right? Everything that's in this toolbox, pretty much specialty tools. Tools that I don't use every day, but when I do need them, they have to go here. When I work on a day-to-day -day basis, I go to this box right here, which is my roll cart. And that's the one that keeps most of my hand tools, my ratchets, my wrenches, um, my, you know, guns, these little chingaderas right here. Okay, so these are like everyday use tools. I can pretty much work out of this any day. But if I need to, like uh, some specialty pliers or special disconnect tools or some special sockets, they'll be in here in this Mac Tools Tech 1000. So without further ado, let's go into this toolbox and let's see what's in there. All right, guys, we're going to start off with everything that's on top of the box right now. And then we'll move our way down into the box through every single drawer so that you guys can see what's in here. And maybe this way you guys get an idea as to what kind of tools you're going to need or what kind of tools you want to buy. All right, so starting over here first, you can see right there my Braun light. I've shown you guys that light in many, many videos. One of the best tools you can have is, is that Braun light. It has a magnetic base, as you can see. Super bright light. I'll put links to other videos where I've shown you guys that. Uh, next, I got my NOCO. This is pretty much a little jump starter box. You guys have probably already seen this. This is rated at 2000. I believe that's cold cranking amps. Um, I got three little bars with charge. I've used it on, couple, on a couple of cars and I haven't charged it since. So this tool holds its charge. It's very good because it also has a light and it got the little chingadera right there for, you know, letting people know that you're SOS or SOL for better terms. All right, so this is a very good tool to have made by Noco, look it up. I'll put links in the description to all the tools that I'm gonna be showing you guys. So, moving down the line. This is my cylinder leakage tester from OTC, which I got a couple months ago. Very clean tool, very good tool to have uh, to find engine mechanical problems. Along with this tool, I also picked up a compression tester. Compression tester, also from OTC. Highly recommend OTC to you guys. If you guys are looking for a compression tester, fuel pressure tester, anything with a gauge on it, OTC is the tool to have. OTC is a very good tool company. I believe OTC makes a lot of tools for Snap-on. So if you're gonna invest in some tools and you want some good quality tools, check OTC first. Got my MotiveX Tools funnels right here that I keep on top of the box. They're very good to have. These little things just screw on like if there were an oil filler cap. And then you put your oil in there, you don't spill anything. MotiveX Tools, link in the description, guys. You guys have already seen my Milwaukee Half Inch Cordless Impact. This thing is very, very powerful. The only thing is I didn't get a battery for it because I also have my Milwaukee drill and I have my Milwaukee impact driver. My Milwaukee drill and my Milwaukee impact driver I use mostly around the house. As you can tell by the tool, they're all covered in like drywall mud. I use them for like uh, to make to do recess lighting, for drywall work, for patching holes, for driving in screws. You know, these are very good. And the good thing about this is that they share the same battery as that one. So this is one thing I recommend to you guys. If you guys are gonna invest in power tools, try to stay with the same brand just so that you don't have to be buying tons of batteries. I can switch batteries from this one to this one to that one. And at the same time, you're gonna be saving money. 
good tools, good quality tools, spend the money ones, and then stick with the same brand. Another thing too is that you don't have to keep buying many different chargers. This charger will charge those batteries and you don't need like three or four different kinds of chargers for many different batteries. Okay, so Milwaukee, I'll put links in the description for you guys to check them out. Got a bunch of fuses here also that I keep around. I keep laying around, I got these maxi fuses. As you can see, these old style maxi fuses, they'll come in handy. Mini fuses with the little legs right there. Can you guys see that? See, now they started coming out with these fuses and these little fuses don't have any legs. Always good to have some spare fuses laying around. You never know. And if you guys saw my last video, you saw that I did struts on our 2009 Chevy Traverse and I did do a complete assembly. But when you don't have the complete assembly available or the customer does not want to get a complete assembly, you're gonna need a spring compressor for the struts. So use this tool to compress the spring. Then you can swap out your struts, your strut mount, and go on with your day. Keep in mind, guys, when you guys buy new tools, a lot of them are gonna come in blow molded cases like this, which will take up a lot of space inside your toolbox but they are good for organization. The only thing is they do take up space. So a lot of these blow molded cases I'll keep out here or I'll keep on the side of my shelves. So without further ado, first things first up in the top drawer. I know you guys are probably expecting to see like 10,000 sockets in here. The truth is guys, you don't need that many sockets to work on cars. So here we go, ready? All right, so up here what I keep is mostly my diagnostic tools. When a car comes in with a check engine light or some kind of engine performance issue, this is the drawer that I go to. I got my snap-on scanner up here. You guys have seen this in many videos. All right, comes with all the adapters. I've had this scanner for about a long time, okay? Too long. <laughs> uh, the scanner can no longer be updated, but I'm keeping it because it's a very good scanner. It's a scope. You can pretty much do everything with this scanner, okay? So got that right there. I got... Uh, vacuum gauge which a lot of people don't even use anymore but it's a very very good tool uh, very quick to use also uh, measures vacuum and some pressure so very good tool to have this one I got from pet boys when I was working at pet boys and I've kept it ever since it's very good this right here goes along with the scanner you guys have seen that I got a spark tester so I can do a quick check of spark in case I got a car that does not start I need to know if it has spark or not this is one thing I wanted to talk to you guys about. I, I recommended this fuel pressure tester from Blue Driver in one of my prior videos. If you guys have seen it, you guys know what I'm talking about. It's a very good looking pressure tester. That's the reason that I bought it. But I always tell you guys that when you buy tools, they have to withstand the test of time and this thing did not. I don't do a review on these tools until I use it. That was just an unboxing. But this Blue Driver fuel pressure tester, no bueno, no bueno. Like I said, if you guys are going to buy a fuel pressure tester, get OTC tools. I'll put links in the description. I was going to get the OTC even though it was a little bit pricey, but I wanted to go the cheap route and that's what happens. You get what you pay for. That right there is just the basic test kit. So what I did get along with the basic test kit so I can make mine a, a master fuel injection tester is I added this SUR uh, kit. So if you, if you have a basic fuel pressure tester and you want to upgrade it, then you want to add this kit to your collection. So very good kit to have. It has everything for all, all makes and models. Uh, mostly all makes and models. Oh yeah, also one thing I keep in here is this big ass pry bar because it doesn't fit in any other drawer. You guys have seen this. Electronic fuel injector tester. This is to do uh, an injector drop test. You guys have seen the video. If not, go back a couple videos. I'll link to it in the description. I'll put it up here so you guys can go watch it. Very, very good tool to have. In here, amp clamp to uh, check amperage. And along this, along with this scanner right here with the scope, very, very good tool. Get some good waveforms. You can see how much amperage any component is drawing. So this is a must have if you're gonna be diagnosing cars. Gotta have it. Wait, one more thing. Inside here, got a little fuse buddy. So this right here goes in place of the fuse and then your amp clamp goes in there like that. And then you get your amperage measurement, no problems. Got all my adapters in here for uh, for my scope. Got my leads, bunch of alligator clips. You need to have alligator clips. Got some cards up in here. This is my uh, MACS. If you're gonna be working with refrigerant, you need to be certified for refrigerant handling. Uh, gotta have it guys, this does not take long to get. I don't know if you guys have ever taken ASC tests, but before they used to send ASC cards like this, when you were certified. Here you go, look, this is when I, my first ASC test that I got in 2015. Brakes and electrical. 
Those were my first ASCs. Then they started doing something like this. I started sending cards over like this. Uh, and you guys can see all the ASCs that I started getting. And eventually, I got all my ASCs. As you guys can see from that master technician plaque right there. But ASCs, get certified guys. It, it's, it doesn't cost much. And then if you work for a company that will pay for your test, take advantage of it. Because ASC tests can get expensive. But they will back you up in the long run. MACS certification if you're going to be working with air conditioning get it it's dirt cheap i think it's like 10 15 bucks to get it okay next drawer wrenches you guys saw this in one of my prior videos where i got this wrench organizer sent to me but like i showed you guys these craftsman wrenches have this little raised area right there that doesn't allow these two to sit in there now i have a lot of craftsmen because i used to go to sears a lot but lately, I've noticed that a lot of Sears stores have been closing. So yeah, I got some uh, standard wrenches. I got some metrics. These are these are from Matco. Very good. And they're 6.2. So these, you got to have a combination of 6 point and 12 point wrenches. These are from Matco. Very good tools. Very good. Very. They feel good on your hand too. So quality, you, you're going to notice that when you buy wrenches, you're going to keep them for years. 10, 20, 30 years. Ratcheting wrenches, a lot of you guys know that gear wrench, I believe were the original people to come up with these ratcheting wrenches, so gotta have those. These are my mountain wrenches, super long mountain wrenches, flex head, ratcheting wrenches, very good, must have tools. If you guys are mechanics or you guys are looking to get into automotive, get these long wrenches. Yes, they are expensive, but they're very well worth it. Little stubbies, you're gonna need little stubbies. When it comes to wrenches, you're going to need short, you're going to need long, you're going to need swivels, you're going to need ratcheting, you're going to need standard, you're going to need metric. But to be honest with you, the standards, I rarely, rarely use them. I do use a lot of metric. Standards, not really. These are from Mac, so I got short, I got metric, I got standard. And also, got some flare nut wrenches. Can you guys see that? A lot of these rarely use them. I do use them when I do brake lines because these are good to go around the brake line and they'll grip the nut on six different sides even though it's open-ended right here but it'll grip it and this is what happens when you buy tools. You go buy tools because you need them and then when you have it, it'll be months before you use it. But if you don't buy it, you're gonna be needing it. It's crazy, it's weird like that. So I got three sets of these. The first one that I picked up was from Craftsman. Very good, Craftsman set. And then I got some SK and I got some snap-on ones. Keep your stuff organized, guys. Easier to find, easier to work. So let's go down to the next drawer. This is a, uh, I guess, miscellaneous drawer. Keep a lot of highlighters and pens because I do a lot of wiring diagrams. And when I do read them, I like to highlight my powers and my grounds and see how circuits work. Got some AC tools right here, Schrader valves. These are very common. They leak a lot. So a lot of times the shop won't have them for you. You got to have your own set. Lighters for heat shrinking. Don't recommend to use a lighter. Use a heat gun, but there's times when you can't stick a heat gun in there. So a little lighter will come in handy. Uh, AC thermometers. I got a manual one and then I got my digital one which I, I prefer and Sometimes I use both of these together just to see if one is more accurate than the other. It, it's good to have both So right now California 65 degrees love it gotta have these okay for AC work Got some little s hangers for calipers Blow guns you're gonna need blow guns Sometimes to clean parts or to clean the shop, even though they say you're not supposed to blow the shop because shit will get in the air and then you'll breathe it and then you'll get sick. Here's another one. This one's pretty good because it has a rubber nozzle, a rubber tip. You can stick it into an orifice and tss. Blades. It's always good to have a blade just because, okay? Tape measure. Always keep a tape measure because you never know. Then I got some extra sockets laying around. These are from Snap-on. Got my Harbor Freight Impact. I got a rail of quarter inch sockets. These are metric and these are standard. Just in case, I just have a bunch of sockets. You know, some you have extra sockets laying around, keep them organized. Uh, what's this? This is a oil pressure switch or oil sender socket. The, one, the thing I don't like about this one is that they made it a half inch. So a lot of these, uh, Say for example, Chevy Tahoe's, you gotta get to that oil pressure switch. You can't stick a half inch ratchet to loosen it. Plus, an oil pressure switch should not be that tight, so you should not need a half inch to remove that oil pressure switch. 
So I also have a short one. This one is from Snap-on. Oil pressure switch on a 3 8. This is a very good one. I'll see if I can find one aftermarket for you guys. I'll link it in the description because you're going to need oil pressure switches to get those things off. Oxygen sensor sockets. Got this one that you can attach a ratchet. And yeah, this one is from Performance Tool. You guys can see that. I think I got this one from Pet Boys. And this is an OEM. Might have gotten it from AutoZone. I don't know, but it's good to have both of these for O2 sensor removal. And I got this little rocker arm lifter upper chingadera. This is one of those tools that I bought when I needed it. And then after that, I never ever needed it again. So this is to remove, uh, to lift up on the push rod. I mean, sorry, to lift up on the rocker arm so you can remove the push rod without taking the rocker arms off. Okay, so it's good if you're doing a lot of GM work, a lot of engine work. Gotta have this. You don't have to have it. You can do without it, but it makes for quicker work. Gotta have a stethoscope. You gotta listen to engine noise. You gotta listen to pulleys. You gotta listen to whatever. Don't use a screwdriver. It does help, but stethoscope, invest in it. This one is from Harbor Freight. I think it's like five bucks, and it's very, very good. Then I got some screwdrivers over here. These are from Mac. No, these are Matco screwdrivers. Okay, it's always good to have good a good set of quality screwdrivers. Don't buy those cheap ones from Harbor Freight. A lot of the times these these uh, the head will not fit properly into the screw. You'll end up stripping the screw. You're gonna have a long day with that. Got some Teflon right here. You're gonna need Teflon for your air fittings. Make sure they don't leak. Got a better Teflon tape right here. This one is one of these thick yellow ones. Got a little pack of batteries just in case. Again, I bought it because I needed batteries. Then after that. Never needed them. Got some brake lathe bits. Here's the thing. This is the thing. Everybody works different. So you're going to have mechanics that, you know, cut rotors and they really dig into the rotor and they mess up those diamond tips. I don't know how they managed to do that, but manager came to me. He said, here, have your own tips. This way, when somebody screws them up, you have your own. All right. I don't go deep on those rotors because you damage the bits, you screw up the rotor, you're overheating. It's just, you gotta learn how to do things properly. So for those of you that haven't seen this before, when you're resurfacing rotors, it's a little diamond chingadera like this. I don't know if it's a diamond tip, but it's it's pretty much a little blade like this that cuts into the rotor. And you can see this one has, has dots. So you can flip this one over and use it a couple times. You can use each side and it lasts longer. Okay, so that's that. I think this is an extractor, let me see. Yeah, you drill and extract. This is a pretty basic one, but it has gotten me out of some situations. And when you strip the head of a nut or a bolt, you gotta have these. A lot of drain plugs. I don't know why people... I, I think the way the reason they strip drain plugs is because they use 12 points instead of 6 point sockets or wrenches. So you gotta have these to remove nuts and bolts with strip heads. Nothing crazy in this drawer. A lot of miscellaneous stuff, but that's what's in there. Ah, yeah, this is my electrical drawer. Uh, I got this little box plastic organizer. And what I keep there is stuff like heat shrink. I do a lot of soldering and heat shrinking when I do wire repairs. Uh, relays, extra relays, known good relays. I tested these before. And you gotta know that they are, they are good relays. If you guys have not seen my relay video, I'll put a link to it up here so you guys can go watch it. But keep extra relays. Uh, T-splice connectors. Rarely use them, um, but they do come in handy once in a while. Uh, little back probers like this. I keep a lot of those in there so I can do some circuit checks. Connectors like this. Keep a lot of these. More connectors. See that? Over time, as, as you start working on cars, you'll, you'll find yourself just throwing stuff in there and, and you don't even know what you have. Uh, let's see. See, I got more connectors. I got some post for side terminals for the batteries. I think I've shown you guys this in other videos. Just a lot of connectors. Pretty much a lot of that's a lot of that stuff is connectors terminals will be in this box right here. And some you know like extra wire. So that's that in that box. Test lights. Test lights. Got two different kinds of test lights. Got this little Craftsman one that's like an LED. Doesn't draw a lot of amperage, so it's good for testing uh, computer circuits. Then I got this one. This is an incandescent test light, incandescent bulb. Um, like it because it's pretty long. I put a little piece of heat shrink right here so that when I'm sticking it up there, you, this doesn't short against any metal or anything like that. But this one is from Mac. This one is from Craftsman. I'll put links. OTC has similar ones like this. I believe OTC makes tools for Mac and Snap-on, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, gotta have a good set of test lights. 
I also got this load pro hook it up to your voltmeter right here and then just use it as a regular uh, voltmeter but you have this load pro button and that'll tell you if you have an open you have high resistance or if the circuit is good soldering irons okay this one I believe is Harbor Freight Chicago Electric and this one is a Craftsman got from Sears a long long time ago just gotta have good ones get a good one don't get this cheapy Harbor Freight I got it to test it out actually it works pretty good but it takes a long time to heat up this Craftsman one pretty good but it's getting old doesn't work like it used to so it's time to invest in a new one but always always have a good set of soldering irons got this little 204 holding my wires together I think I've shown you this plenty of times before automotive test lead kit right here from electronic specialties it's pretty much uh, stuff for your voltmeter uh, little probes alligator clips some of them are missing because whatever wire piercers be very careful when using these you don't want to pierce through the wire so much and after you pierce it do repair it because it will corrode and give you more problems down the line so pretty good kit to have this is pretty basic I got it a long time ago uh, terminal release toolkit if you don't use I a lot of you guys have seen me use a t-pin with a like a little pocket screwdriver but this is what uh, the proper tool it's a terminal tool release kit for you know undoing terminals and fixing terminals uh, my voltmeter you guys have seen that voltmeter from fluke a uh, bunch of electrical tape gotta have electrical tape laying around extra alligator clips uh, remote starter this is a remote starter so pretty much this goes on the starter if you can access it and then you'll hit hit the switch uh, good for like testing spark testing compressor if you don't have an extra hand you don't have a helper this is good got a little glue gun got the glue gun right here in case something breaks a lot of you guys know that stuff breaks when you're working on cars because plastic is brittle sometimes you, you'll break something and you gotta have something to fix it these glue guns come in very very handy and then this is Gorilla Glue so it, it's really good this my Lyle power and ground tester you guys have seen it in many videos also give you a just put this on this what used to be the cigarette lighter I haven't even seen cigarette lighters anymore so pretty much this goes on your power outlet of your car then you have a power and you have a ground as soon as this light lights if this light does not light then that means your chingadera doesn't work but very good tool to have I'll put links in the description for this so that right there is my electrical drawer you don't need to, you don't need to get too crazy with electrical tools just like for example I got this load pro and honestly I don't even use it anymore I don't even use it anymore because I just use test light voltmeters. I start jumping stuff and then I know what works and what doesn't work. Right here. So I got a couple of torque wrenches here. This is a 3 8 torque wrench for Craftsman that I got. Keep it in there. Another torque wrench. This one is from CDI Tools. I believe CDI is the company that makes torque wrenches for Snap-on. So. Then I got a quarter inch torque wrench. And to be honest with you, I rarely, rarely use this quarter inch torque wrench. Alright, so I got this Lyle Master Disconnect set from Lyle. You guys have seen me use these uh, many times, especially for like um, fuel lines, transmission lines. Uh, some of these, I believe the two bigger ones for like Chevy heater, heater hose couplers. And then you got these that come at an angle. Let me open that for you. Master Disconnect set. I'll put a link down in the description if you guys want to check it out. Very good tool to have. All right, got an impact driver set, impact tool from Lyle. And I got this one from Snap-on. Same thing, one's more expensive than the other, but they do the same thing. All right, so this is from VIM Tools, triple square. I got these so I can do alignments on like BMWs, Mercedes, a lot of European cars that use these triple squares. So it's not, it's not a, it's like a 12 point. There you go, you can see that right there, triple square. All right, so that is a short set of triple squares. And I also got this bigger set just because I got a good deal on it, but got to have it for uh, European cars. This right here is for your fuel pumps. It's a fuel pump uh, lock ring release tool. Pretty much goes around the lock ring and you turn it and turn it and turn it. And then you can take out your pump out of there. These are from Lyle. These are for rear brakes on a lot of GMs with those springs. Pretty much this goes on there releases the tension on the spring and it, it holds uh, holds a spring for you so you can change out the shoes uh, pretty good tool to have used it a couple times but sometimes it does become more of a hassle with this tool so it's it's better to do it with like screwdrivers and pliers and whatnot engine tilt tool right here again for GM's 
a lot of GM products um, will have those two wishbones on the 3100 or 3400 engines. Back in the, uh, yeah, this, they stopped making those engines, but this was a good tool to have. So you can bring the engine forward, pretty much goes on the wishbone, and then it tilts the engine forward this way. You can work on the back spark plugs or on the back of the engine. Basically the right side of the engine, which goes towards the firewall. This right here is a dual overhead cam holding tool for dual overhead cam engines so you can swap out timing belts or do any kind of work. This tool will hold your camshafts into place. Bought it, used it once, never again. Power steering pullers. These are from Snap-on. Uh, mostly for uh, American domestic cars. Asians like Toyota, Honda, they'll use a nut to hold the power steering pulley onto the pump. But a lot of these uh, Fords, Chevys, GMs, they'll have the, uh, the pulley pressed into the pump, so you need something like this to unpress it out of there. So there is my next drawer. This is a, uh, again, like I said, blow molded cases will take up a lot of the space, but it keeps it organized. I had a blow molded case for a lot of these pliers. These are for cooling systems, for, uh, for hose clamps on the radiator hoses. I don't know why it came with this many pliers, but I don't really use a lot of these anymore. Use them probably once or twice, and that's about it. You're gonna need, or one thing I do recommend is you get a, a hose clamp remover like this because a lot of these radiator hoses or, or heater hoses, their clamps are down way in the engine bay. So you would use something like this, I guess sort of extension. Let's say the clamp is down here, squeeze it, and it'll take it off for you. You squeeze over here and the work is done over there. Boom, takes it in, release the clamp, get it out of there, and go on with your day right there. So kind of have this, this one is from Snap-on. Coolant pressure tester for pressure testing. Now this is just a basic one, uh, Honda, Toyota, GM. If you're gonna be pressure testing Volkswagens and all that, you're gonna need different adapters. It's pretty much a little air pump. It pumps air into the cooling system so you can find your leaks. This one has different sizes. Put it down into the reservoir and then you squeeze it on there and then it seals it up for you. Then you put your connector up here, adapter, pressure test it and then find your leak. Blow molded cases again. These, I believe they're just extensions. Yeah, 3 8 impact extensions. This is my half inch impact extension set. TPMS tool kit. It's, this is for working on tire sensors if you work at a tire shop. It's a pretty good tool to have. So you can swap out sensors without doing any damage to them. Everything you're gonna need for TPMS tool removal and installing right there. Ford spark plug removal toolkit. If that Ford spark plug breaks, you're gonna need something like this to get that spark plug out of its hole. Again, bought it, never used it. I don't know, I might sell it. I don't need it. I have no use for it right now. And watch, when I sell it, I'm gonna need it. That's just how it is. Serpentine belt tool. This is from Lyle. Pretty much goes down in there. Boom, release the tensioner. Boom, put it back. Very good tool. Comes with different adapters. Old tool that I've had, very old. Used it, did the job, but I got a newer one, so this one just sits there and looks nice. I had a water pump fan clutch removal kit, which I sold because I didn't have any use for it anymore. And we'll get to that at the end of the video, so continue watching, because we're gonna have a little talk at the end. Next drawer. Empty space. I had some R134 gauges that I sold because I have no use for them anymore. But let's go on right here. Heat gun. This comes in very handy for like removing emblems out of cars. Think of it like a blow dryer for mechanics, okay? Uh, got some, I don't know what this is. Extra ignition wires because a lot of times customers don't want to buy the wires when you recommend them. So you got to have extra ones just in case one or two rip. Yeah, that's for GM, Chevy, Tahoes, Yukon, Suburbans, Silverados, 5.3 liter engines. You get the idea. Harmonic balancer puller. This is good for a lot of GM, Chrysler's. I'll show you what's in here. That right there. You're gonna need that puller uh, if you're gonna be taking off harmonic balancers, crank pulleys that are pressed in there. You know that Honda does not press your pulley in there, but uh, other, other manufacturers do. So it's good to have this. And this is what happens when you start working on different manufacturers, you're gonna need all kinds of tools. Power probe, one of my favorite tools to use. Power probe, good for electrical checks. 
This is good. This is a power probe 3. This is good for setting power and ground. Uh, to do some checks, I think I did one in the uh, brake light video, and I'll put a link to it up here on the top so you guys can see it. Uh, very good tool to have. Again, blow molded cases. Keep your tools cleaner, keep them organized. Uh, disc brake caliper set. I got this back in the day when they barely started coming up with these rear calipers that needed to be winded in. All right, this is a basic, basic kit from Mac Tools, but a very expensive one. Now you can get cheaper ones online. I'll put links to them down in the description so you can go to Amazon, pick one up. I'll put a good one for you guys. This one right here, if I'm not mistaken, I think I paid 300 for it. 300 bucks, that's right. This is what happens when you wanna buy Mac Tools, Snap-ons, Mac Go, you pay a very high price for tools. All right, so this is a very basic one, but I keep it because it's my first one. Uh, this is a bearing and race installer. This is a very good tool to have. A lot of explorers with the spindles, Ford Expeditions. Uh, if you're gonna be swapping out races and bearings, gotta have this. And this is a coil spring compressor. For compressing springs, not on McPherson struts, but on like on SLA suspensions, uh, you stick this down in there. Uh, this plate holds the spring from the bottom and then this one, you throw it in there and it compresses it. I haven't shown you guys a video on it, but if the opportunity comes up, I'll show you guys how to use it. Uh, again, one of those things that you rarely, rarely do. Uh, it's good for control arms to compress the springs if you want to remove the control arm because it's very, it's under very, very high tension or pressure or whatever. One of those things that you rarely come across, but when you do, you need it. Serpentine belt tool from, I believe it's KD Tools or Gear Wrench. Uh, Gear Wrench. Gear Wrench. Uh, this is a ratcheting serpentine belt tool. Very good tool to have. Yeah, I'll put a link in the description. All right, oh look, it's KD Tools. KD Tools makes it for gear wrench. See, this is when stuff like that gets a little bit complicated because some tools make tools for other tool brands and yeah, that's what happens. Plastic trim remover. All right, so you won't damage any other car parts. This is a very good kit to have. I got this from ATD Tools and a bunch of other crap. You'll find yourself that when you have your toolbox, you just start throwing stuff in there and that's what happens. You gotta clean it up, you gotta do a, a little cleaning every once in a while to organize it. But I did have my AC refrigerant hoses in here, which I sold, because uh, when I started working in shops, I, uh, they, you know, they use uh, the, the machine, where I had not use for my hoses anymore, so I got rid of them, and I made some money. So that's this whole side. Oh, all right, so this right here is a set of hex sockets. I believe these are from Tekton or Texon or Nyko. Not sure, but I did get them from Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description if you guys want to get this exact same set. Uh, it's a very good set to have. Has pretty much all the sizes. So you got your metric and you got your standard. So invest in a good set like this. Torx sockets. Also a very good kit. Uh, you got your Torx. You got some security bit Torx. Let me see. Yeah, security bit Torx with the little hole. You're gonna need these. A lot of manufacturers like to put those in there. Then you got this other one that looks like a Torx, but it's not really a Torx. It also has your inverted Torx. Inverted Torx like that. See that? I'll put a link in the description for you to check it out. Got some extra fittings. Got a bunch of extra extensions. Ratchets. Now these are all extra. This is not where I go to to use my ratchets and my extensions. All that is in my other cart back there. I'll show you guys that later on, but this is just extra stuff that I have. Uh, some vacuum lines, vacuum fittings, connectors or whatnot. Nothing special here, nothing crazy. Okay, so what I got here? I got some air hammers, Ingersoll Rand. If you guys are buying air tools, Ingersoll Rand is a brand you want to go to. I believe Ingersoll Rand makes tools for Snap-on, Metco, and Mac, if I'm not mistaken. See, if you guys get a... a a gun from Matco, it's gonna be made by Ingersoll Rand. So this is a half inch impact. This is a 2135, I believe, TI Max. Snap on, air ratchet. Don't use this anymore because I don't feel like dealing with the hose at the end of it. I go for my electric, my battery powered tools, my Milwaukee uh, 3 8 and half inch. A little impact uh, reducer. What are these, torque sticks? torque sticks, so you won't over torque wheels. This uh, Centro Nomadic from Harbor Freight. It's a very good tool to have. Comes with all these little adapters right here, like these brushes and these uh, like wire wheels to scuff up stuff. Punch and chisel, you see? You're gonna need some of these to, a la verga. Pickle forks for suspension and steering. 
for ball joints, tie rods. You guys see this timing light? Yep, bought it, used it a couple times, never again. Timing lights are a thing of the past, I believe. Inner tie rod tool for inner tie rods, self-explanatory. This thing goes all the way through and then loosen it. Along with that, you're gonna need your inner tie rod adapters right here. See this? All these little like half moon chingaleras just go in there. It's, think of it like a, a crow foot wrench. Goes in there, loosens the inner tie rod, and then you can get it out. All these little adapters are different sizes for inner tie rods. Gotta have it. Air hammer adapters. Okay, and this is this is what I like about this one. It's a quick connect, so it pretty much goes in here. And boom, you're in. You're gonna be that guy that's going on the, on the chingadera. You're gonna be going hard with the air hammer. Brrrr, all day. And it gets annoying after a while. But yeah, this is pretty much that. Oh, I got a little a little grinder like this, like a little brush wheel. This is from Mac, Mac Tools. Also very handy, comes in, scuff up with a little scuffing pad. Next drawer. So I got my Motivex funnels, all the adapters right here. I put them in, I made a drawer for that. Got a little vacuum pump. So you can test solenoids or whatnot, check for vacuum on the engine. Gotta have it, good to have it. Again, gotta, I say gotta have it, but it all depends on what kind of work you want to do. If you don't do any kind of engine work, you don't do any kind of uh, diagnosing and troubleshooting, then you probably don't need that. If you're going to specialize in suspension and steering, you're going to be doing that all day. If you're going to go work at brake masters, you're going to be doing brakes all day. I think it, it all depends on where you're going to work. But Chains for uh, pulling engines out. Extra bolts to bolt into the uh, little hooks. Pulling engines out. Some kind of puller. Yep, and I, I, I think I, I cut this off because it was in the way of, uh, I don't know what, it was in the way. But it, it pretty much looks like a, you know what I'm talking about. It comes with a bunch of screws and bolts that screw onto the pulley so you can pull it out. What is this, a Honda camber kit? Yeah, a Honda cam camber kit for like old Civics. Uh, when we did alignments, like we ordered a bunch of these and it comes with a bunch of different like shims. So you guys can see that to push your camber out. I got some extra alignment shims over here also. Again, like new cars, a lot of new cars, they don't even use shims anymore. They use, uh, they have adjusting bolts. But I got this. If one of you guys need this Honda camber kit, hit me up. Let me know. Drop it down in the comments. I have no use for it. I just kept it. And then I got this bit, this Titan bit set. Pretty good bit set. Has all these little... All kinds of bits. See that? All kinds. Uh, you never know when it'll come in handy, but when you do, you'll have it. Alright, and one more drawer. Let's see what's in here. Ooh, extra stuff. Sandpaper, because sandpaper. Microfiber cloth, because microfiber cloths. Uh, I got this little p uh, piston ring or piston installer, piston ring compressor to install a piston. Back when I had my, my Malibu, uh, I don't think I made a video on it, but one of the pistons was bad. And I took it, when I was working at Chevy, I took it off another engine that was, that was just there on the stand. And I went to Harbor Freight, bought this $5 ring compressor, popped my new piston in, solved my problem. Five bucks, Harbor Freight, guys. Streamlight, LED. One of the best flashlights you can get, rechargeable, will last you forever, forever. We got the stream light, then you also want to invest in one of these little headlights, goes on your head, so that you can use both of your hands to work when you're working under a car, in any dark space. Uh, this one has three lights, it's not charged, but it's a pretty good one. I think stream light, stream light makes one also, and yeah, just gotta have a little headlight. This is a snap-on. It's one of these uh, work lights, pretty much. What I like about this one is that, now uh, this is before these rechargeable lights started coming out, like the one from, from Harbor Freight, my Braun light. But you pretty much take this and hook it up to battery positive and negative, then you got a light. You got a light that you can use, and as long as your battery's good, then you got a light. Engraver to engrave my tools, because if you notice, when you work in a shop, you guys will start recommending tools to each other, and you guys will start confusing tools, so engrave it. Engrave your name on your tools, and this way you don't get into arguments with your co-workers. Speaker wire, uh, good to jump stuff, but also good for speakers because I used to wire speakers and radios and all that before. Scotch, I think it's from Walmart. Walmart has good stuff. 
So let's coach. Uh, I got this extra AC module. I don't know why I have it here. I and mean, I didn't even know I had this, but uh, if you guys need one, I got it for your van or your truck. I don't know. It works. It's good. This might have been one of those things that I misdiagnosed and I kept it. Um, extra hose just here. I think I got a set of uh, Craftsman. Uh, one of these chingaderas. I got, I got the Craftsman. The air ratchet, the little impact, and the air hammer. It comes in a little set of three, and then it comes with this hose. So, but I kept the hose. I think I got rid of the three tools. It was like 50 bucks. It's a little cheapy set, and uh, yeah, I kept the hose. But that is pretty much it, guys. Bunch of tools, air tools, uh, rags. Did I show you the rags? Yeah, you need rags to wipe stuff. And boom. All right, well. There you have it guys, that is everything that it, that's inside my Mac Tools Tech 1000 Automotive Toolbox. Okay, so now just keep in mind that a lot of these tools, like you guys saw that I showed you guys a lot of tools and I had a lot of space, that, tools that I got rid of because this is what happens. So you'll be working at a certain spot. So for example, let me tell you about me. I used to work at, at Pet Boys on Crenshaw Boulevard and I saw a lot of Tahoe's, a lot of Cadillacs, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of GM products. So I had that water pump tool. And then when I went to work in Alhambra, which is a primarily Asian community, um, I didn't, I had no need because Asians don't drive Tahoe's or do they? I mean, I never see when it's rare when you see an Asian driving a Tahoe or a Silverado or a big Cadillac, you know, they'll drive Toyota, Sienna's, Honda's and not to be stereotypical here, but it's the truth. I went to work in Alhambra and I had no need for my GM tools anymore. So I was like, dude, I, I gotta get rid of them. So I did. And then you come back, it, it, it all depends, like where you want to work and where you stay working at. When I was working on Alhambra, I was working on a lot of Honda, Toyota, Nissans. So I started buying tools for imports, which is why I went to buying a lot of metrics. I stopped buying these standard size wrenches and sockets. You know, there, there is a time when you're going to need them and it's good to have them. But uh, for me, if it's taking a space in my box and I don't need it, I'm going to get rid of it. Either sell it or do a giveaway or something. But yeah, my AC hoses, I stopped using those when I started, I, I use them, I can count on my hands the times that I use those AC, hose, AC hoses, but then when I worked at a shop, they had the big refrigerant machine that recovers, uh, recharges, and pulls vacuum and whatnot, so you can do everything with that one machine, you don't need the manifold gauge set anymore. So I sold it. Uh, if it's taking up space, I'm going to get rid of it. So you, you'll find yourself that you're going to buy tools that you think you need, and then you use it that one time, and then never again in a matter of months or years. So get rid of it. So my advice to you is this. If you're going to come into the automotive field, uh, try, I mean it's good to learn everything. It's good to learn everything, but try to focus on one specific area of automotive. When I went to school, my instructor told me, Hector, stick to electrical. There's very few techs that want to do electrical. It's not dirty work. It's more brain work. They say work smart, not hard, right? But I say work smart, work hard. It's going to make you a better tech overall. So my instructor recommended that I studied electrical and that I got good at electrical work because not a lot of people were doing it. He said a lot of newer cars, there's going to be a lot of modules involved, learn how all that shit works and you'll be better. In the meantime, other guys in class were trying to do heads and, you know, and engine mechanical work, which is good. There, there's, there's, a, there's a need for that, right? There's people that need engine work. But what I'm saying is if you're going to be doing engine repair work and then electrical work and then you're going to do transmission work and then body work, like just stick to one. Don't be, don't be a, a jack of all trades is what I'm trying to say. You can be a bumper to bumper tech and guess what? You're gonna need to invest a lot more tools than somebody who just only does AC work or only does engine repair work, right? For engine repair work, you don't need a lot of the tools that are in here, sockets, wrenches, a couple uh, engine uh, specialty tools, but nothing too crazy. So try to focus and, and stay on one area of automotive. Okay, it's good to know everything, but then once you start working, like for example, when I was at Firestone, I didn't do clutches and engine repairs, engine swaps, because my focus was on the uh, technical work, which was the electrical, finding shorts, diagnosing, check engine lights, AC work, and I, I never had to pull out engines or drop transmissions, you know, so it, it pays good money, but my work was more technical than than physical, if, if that makes any sense. Don't get me wrong, I, I did do that kind, I can do that kind of work, but 
it's it's better if you focus on on one area so when somebody can, like suspension and steering there's a guy for that that oh we need control arms who can do them oh give it to that guy because he can do them in 30 minutes i could probably do them in 30 40 minutes but he's the guy to go to you know oh electrical work hector check engine light hector so what i'm trying to tell you is be that guy don't be uh well he could do it all but what is what is he good at what is he specializing so the moment you focus yourself on what you want to do in that one area of automotive then your your amount of tools that you want to buy reduces so you save money on tools you become an expert in one area of automotive instead of being a jack of all trades master of none be a master of one master your craft master that one part of automotive so when somebody says electrical boom your name pops up when somebody says check engine light boom your name pops up and don't be the guy that does a check engine light reads the code and throws a part at it you know actually learn the system learn the circuit learn how it works learn to diagnose it and and if you don't know then say you don't know that you need to fucking learn more it's good you know there's nothing wrong with that you always you're, you never stop learning you're always learning it's especially in automotive it's a never-ending game you know you you might learn something today and then tomorrow it's something else right we learn how to do brakes then they came with the spin on brakes now they're doing electronic brakes it, it is what it is guys but that's it that's gonna be my toolbox tour drop your comments down below and um, I don't know how long this video is gonna be but I pretty much went through everything uh, in my box and a lot of these tools that are in here guys you're gonna find yourself buying tools that you, you use once and never again and, and that's how it is because a lot of times we buy off instinct we buy it quick you know we don't we don't know what tools we're gonna need until we're out there in the field so if you guys are looking to this uh, toolbox tour as to what you need to buy what I recommend is get out there in the field first start working decide what area of automotive you want to specialize in or if you want to be a bumper to bumper tech and you want to be one to do it all then there's nothing wrong with it get get on but just know that you're gonna have to buy more tools and the more makes and manufacturers that you work on that's even more tools so I, sh I stayed away and I stay away from Volkswagen Mercedes BMW just be especially when diagnosing because then that's another scanner you can't use a scanner oh I have a scanner or oh, now you need the European software or oh, you can't do that now you need a VATCOM now you need this now you need this now you need these sockets like it just goes and goes and goes and you start investing and investing and investing so try to narrow it down this way you narrow your you you narrow your your craft into something that you can master something that you can mold and be an expert at it you know I, I don't know I'm going off track but that's it it is what it is guys there's my toolbox tour for you guys let me know if you guys want me to review or do a tour of my tool cart over here uh, which is pretty much my everyday tools everything that's in that tool cart I'm pretty much using it every day everything that's in here every once in a while that's it guys I'm gonna end it right here I'll see you guys on the next one which should be shortly so subscribe comment down below don't forget to like the video if it helped you guys out if you guys like it and i'll see you guys on the next one peace